Hi there, uh, welcome to another short tutorial and um, this time um, we'll be looking into simplex method and how to solve this algebraically. And um, basically I will be using the, uh, this example which I borrowed from uh, a book called Introduction to Operations Research uh, written by Hillier and uh, Lieberman. Uh, it goes like this. You have we, we have uh, two products and um, the company that manufactures these two products has three plants and this is the constraints they face. Uh, each plant has a maximum number of uh, available uh, hours per week. For example, in plant one, they have uh, four hours, total four hours, and the plant two, they can operate uh, 12 hours a week and plant three, they have 18 hours uh, per week of production production time uh, they also know that uh, the profit for each uh, product for example product one gives a total of um, uh, each product gives each product one gives three thousand us dollars uh, profits and the profit for product two is five thousand so the objective here uh, the objective here is to um, find a combination of uh, this uh, combination of production of these two products that maximizes the total profits for the company. So in the language of mathematical programming, this is how we write the, 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 the problem. Uh, apparently it's a linear programming problem. It has uh, this object function. We want to maximize Z, which in this case is profit. And we have uh, three times because each unit of X1 has $3,000 uh, uh, profit and uh, each X2 has 5,000. So, and now um, we, we, we have these restrictions also. Um, for example, because if I go back to the problem here, uh, to the example here, in plant one, we have only we produce here only one unit of x1 and nothing of x2 and in plant 2 we have uh, nothing of x1 which means we are not producing product 1 in plant 2 but we are using two units of uh, product 2 and in the last plant we are producing three units of the first first product and two units of the second product so this is uh, what is shown here x1 is less than or equal to 4 Two x two times the second product cannot exceed the amount of uh, hours available for plant two, and this is also the last equation for the third plant. We have three units of the first product and two units of the second product, and the total hours cannot exceed uh, 18 hours per week. And because we are we are not, we are not allowed to produce any negative number of because we can't do that in negative pro products then we have also these non-negativity restrictions. And please note here, we are very fortunate that this is in our standard form. This problem is very easy to solve without any other adjustments because this is what's called the standard form. You have maximization problem, all the functional inequalities are less than or equal to, and the non-negativity uh, equations. Okay, so if we go to the main idea behind the simplex method, which is discovered by uh, this guy uh, called G George Danzig, who is the one uh, behind the, the linear programming, uh, he, 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 he really took time and uh, discovered all these things. And uh, yeah, he was a wonderful guy because it's, it, it turned out that many companies uh, were saving uh, millions and millions of dollars because of this application. So when he uh, discovered the simplex method, um, yeah, it's, it's a long history. We are not going to, into the details, but he thought it was not very useful. But later he, found, he, he fortunately found out that after one year or so, it really was very fantastic. And what makes it very fantastic is that uh, if, if notes now we have only two goods because of only two goods we can draw this uh, graphically in, in, in our plane and uh, if, if we look uh, because this is our feasible region and it's feasible region because it's the intersection of 
it lies within the intersection of all these constraints and uh, uh, these are called corner points and um, those that lie on uh, on uh, on all these intersections are called feasible corner points where, where, whereas those that lie that partially fulfill the restrictions and not others are called just corner points so these are corner feasible points uh, or corner feasible uh, point solutions so, so what what's very very good about simplex method is it does not have to take time to 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 calculate all these points within the region it just focuses on the corner points so in this pro in this uh, and also not all the corner points just those that are feasible so in this in this example we have uh, five points uh, that are corner feasible uh, point solutions so it will first check here and uh, generally it goes like this it will initialize from the origin and it will move to another point which is adjacent in this case either this direction or this direction and it will continue moving from one point to the adjacent better one until it finds this no longer a better one which means that if you cannot find it no longer any better one then that is the best one so that's the underlying uh, concept which is geometric but because this algorithm is run on um, computers the computer understands uh, the algebraic language so uh, yeah these are just the points i have tried to say so this uh, basically there are three steps First, you initialize. Generally, we do this by choosing the origin. And then we test. And generally, because we start the origin and we set all the decision variables to zero, generally, the first step is to go to a better better point. So we, we test this optimal, if this is optimal, and because generally we find, find a better uh, solution than the origin, then we try to continue and we will continue if we can find a better position or otherwise we will stop so if we cannot find any other better solution then we just stop and say this uh, last uh, position must be optimal because because we cannot find any better solution so in short the simplex method focuses solely on cpf solutions it's an iterative algorithm because it continues and tests this optimality uh, condition and it will only stop if it can no longer find a better solution. Uh, initialization, like I said, it will generally choose uh, uh, the origin. That's the decision variables are generally set to equal to zero. Yeah, and of course, it will all, always choose CPF or corner point feasible solution that is adjacent to the current one. And when it uh, chooses to move, it will always choose to move along the one direction that has the largest rate of improvement. For example, if you go back to this figure here, moving this direction, which means moving to x1, you have uh, x1 is 4 and uh, x2 is 0. Whereas you have this here, uh, x1 is 0 and x2 is, two is 6. So because 6 is greater than 4, it will be natural or to go to this direction and not this direction. So it will go up and not to the right. So that's what is meant by this last point, which says it will choose to move along the one with the largest rate of improvement in Z, which means in our objective function. Okay, so that was the main ideas, the geometric ideas. Now when we interpret this into algebraic, it's almost the same but there is some trick involved here this was our original model now we introduce slack variables remember in one previous video i i just defined slack variable to be an idle resource a resource to not use it so why do we introduce this slack variable simply because we wanted to change this inequality to equality here it was this x1 was less than or equal to 4 so it was anything between because it's also it has to be positive so it was anything it, we allow it to be it's anything between 0 and 4 but here we are saying if we add 
the slack the unused amount of this 